what, what, are you, what have you been thinking about as far as the, the piece in general? And, you know, how are you, how are you preparing to go into it? Well, you know, I'm going in a lot of different directions. First of all, when I did the last episode, there's a lot of mystery and mystique behind your character yeah. and how it all got started. Uh, I think what came to mind was, where were your parents? Where were my children that were your parents? That's, that was never a little, discussed. There's a little bit of that that's... Um, Hinted at a little more in this one, you know, with the scene in uh, Roy's uh, bedroom where he looks at the picture. Um, so that's supposed to be his uh, he, Huey, and their father. Okay. So um, I want to. Um, I'm leaving, and more that gets answered in the the feature film. Yeah. Um, and I want to, uh, but the final part of this whole saga, I want to really. Um, expand more on that before I close everything off. Yeah. That's fine. I don't mind if yeah. being a little mystery. Like, it was just going to help me a little bit to know how attached I was to my grandchildren. Mm. Um, and from whence they first came to be with me. Well, I would say for your character, he's... Um, Roy's your oldest. Um, Huey is your youngest. You only have two. And you are very attached because you helped raise me. So um, th there is a lot of mystery, but for the most part, you were you were essentially their mother. So uh, and you know in our and and especially in the, you know, the city and the environment we live in, that's that's common. Oh, like, very much so. Um, you know, my cousins were pretty much um, they lived with their uh, our, well, our grandmother for most of their younger years. Um, you know, of course, my uh, deep attachment to my grandmother who inspired, you know, your character. So, yeah. Um, speaking of, I talked to my dad today, and he um, he said your uh, portrayal of Claudette reminded him of my grandmother, his mom. So, um, he really, your, your performance has had a profound um, effect on people, like it's had a real, well, that real sounds, big. That sounds just real positive for me, yeah. uh, by first saying that I've not had any children. However, I had amazing grandparents and parents, mm -hmm. and the village helped to raise us all, my sisters and I. And that love and warmth and just feeling of family, the bond, that we would go to any limits to do what we had to do to be there mm -hmm. for, for each other. other yeah. And that just to me, you know, I mean, I'm getting a chill just thinking about it. And you know, I mentioned, and I'm not going to speak too much on that, but yesterday I told you I had to see a play. Oh, Brian yeah, Brian Anthony Wilson. And I brought yeah, the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted you to see the book. Okay. Yeah, but I'll definitely take a look. It was called Lady Sitting. Mm -hmm. And it was about an elderly woman in her 90s. She was just about to reach 100. Okay. And she was speaking on her caregiver. And the reaction that she had with her granddaughter, who was basically taking care of her. Okay. And it brought back to mind because the whole play was about caregiving and people being there for the elderly, for their grandparents and the like. And I sat there almost in tears throughout, you know, throughout the play because I was thinking about Roy and Hunter. And the impact, I was my mother's caregiver. Oh, you were? Oh, I don't know that I ever shared that with you. My mother had an eight stroke. She had open heart surgery, she had brain surgery, she had so many things going wrong with her. She did not have cancer, but she had all of those things. And for five years after that diagnosis, she was very active, loving, caring, Christian woman. And I was there. Timing is everything. How we get into different situations with our loved ones is based on God's plan for us all. And it put, he put me there at a time when I didn't think I was even capable of doing it. So the relationship with what I'm trying to tell you here, with my scenario, my truth, and your film, is that grandmother, grandma, seemed to be the one who was always in control. 
she was the caregiver of two grandsons. And yet, here the roles reverse sometimes. And here I was, in my life, a caregiver for my mother who was always in control. My dad was as well, but mom took care of her. She worked and took care of her. And so in doing so, now here I am, the caregiver. But now I'm sick. You see, and that's, that's what brings out all of the compassion and everything, that no matter what my children may be doing in their lives, I will always be there for them yeah. until I can't be there anymore. So, um, so I just had to share that part. The big, the big, one of the biggest, um, there's a lot of, you know, there's action and drama in this now and intrigue, but the, um, the heart and soul of the film is still, you know, and the reason that all this is happening is the relationship between uh, a grandson and his grandma. That's what, that's what causes all of this. Like, you know, if, if, if their relationship wasn't what it was, he probably wouldn't be doing what he's doing. And um, he, it's about family. Like, that's, that's really what... And see, I must admit that the first go round, I did not really have that understanding. I just thought that you had this secret life that you were into. But there were a couple scenes there where you were in conversation, you know, with the other side, that's what it's called, where it was made known that you were pretty much forced into this lifestyle. This was not you. And I know the love and the respect and compassion that uh, your grandmother had for you. It would never suggest you being involved in that type of world, you know. But you did what you had to do. Yeah. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's a lot of different uh, themes going on here, you know, with um, lemonade. Thank you, dear. Uh, a lot of different themes, uh, and one of them in particular is. Uh, you know, just the kind of the financial state of the world right now, and um, you know, especially the um, people in the inner city. Yeah. Um, and that's what um, I really want to speak to as this these films continue. Um, you know how. You know how desperate things can get. You know for people to try to take care of each other and themselves and um, remain, but at the same time trying to remain, I guess, civilized to us, insane to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, so um, this 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 film really, and I've been talking with the director and DP about it, how it really goes into. Um, the psychology of ruin. All, everything is pretty much um, from what's going on up here in his head, and it's going to be filmed that way. It's almost. It's def I definitely wanted to be cerebral and psychological um, on a level where you start to understand why a man would go to these lengths um, to take care of the ones he loves. Because it, it, it's almost a scenario where if it was just about him, he probably would just let it ride. Okay. But there are other people involved. There are other people he wants to take care of. And he can't he can't see himself letting them down. Um, so things go into a violent direction, you know, trying to make sure that, you know, the people you don't want to see do do bad what what you would do to ensure that they, they stay healthy and they're taken care of. So um, it's, it's I think it's an amazing, amazing story, especially for this time. Because that's something family is something that we're losing. You know, at least we exist, but it's as if we were non-existent in each other's lives. You don't see that in the children. It's like so many of them have gone their own way. And why? You know, you can't blame the children. You have to hold the parenting or the village. 
responsible. And then society, you know, in some ways, you know, certainly society preys on it because if there's a dollar to be made or met, you know, they're going to hone in on that and try to disband the family to keep control over things. This is, this is my opinion yeah, no, it's, and it's, my feeling about thing. what's going on, that's you know, and thing. it's just so sad to watch sometimes. I see it. I'm glad you picked up on that because that's one of the themes of the uh, film, just how the world is changing and what um, those who, you know, um, are in power are doing to try to hold on to that power. I, I really want this uh, to speak to people. Um, this, this film, it's yeah, a message. Right? Yeah, there's definitely a message behind it. It's yeah. not just, uh, you know, mindless killing. And um, I, I definitely want it to be thought provoking. Uh, so that's where um, that's where my head is at. And um, I think I love, you know, film and entertainment. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that we, I guess, consume now is just kind of mindless. I mean, I, I want you to see this, and then you know, when you when you're done watching, you can sit back and just wow, like, you know, but something you could watch again and pick that, up different exactly. things. And, that, and, that's how I write my yes. thing. I want you to be able to pick up. Oh, this time I looked at it this way. Or. Uh, when you look at the films all together, you're like, oh, they hinted at that one or two films ago. This is why this happened, you know, so um, it, it, it takes me, it takes me a little longer to get stuff done. You know, um, I don't like uh, the kind of microwave nature of media and entertainment right now. I want something that um, you can sit back and chew on for a while, like something to keep you full. You know, yeah. Um, I'm, and I'm so I'm so excited to have you be um, a part of it. Um, I appreciate you. I'm definitely yeah. You know, there's so much. I don't know. There's so much the same. There's so many similarities in a lot of what we see today. And of course, people write and and direct and screen films based on their experiences many times. But it's that person that goes the extra mile for the thought-provoking ideologies or ideas that come up that they hadn't really thought about. It could be about the same types of situations, but the reasons behind it could be different. Nothing is new. I mean, nothing is, is, is new, really. Everything just kind of goes around in circles. You know, there's additions to it, subtractions to it. But with this, I truly felt something, and um, I just wish we had had even more time. <laughs> Is this is why I, I wanted to um, definitely had a pre-production for this. Um, it needed to be planned out uh, more in depth or thoroughly than the previous film Just because it's, it's it's a bigger piece. It's more involved. There's more. It's more at stake for me personally and just for the characters now. Um, um, you know, in this one, you know, if if Roy doesn't do this all well, that doesn't all well, that doesn't survive so it, it's it's you can't negotiate you know, there's no um there's no other uh recourse it, it's, it's time to act now, you know and in the last film you kind of see him pushing that away like he, he he's he but you know he gets in that's why at the table he becomes so angry in the last one because like I was really trying to remove myself from this situation, but you know, that's not that's not in the cards. You know, so, um, yeah. Can I ask you how much of a relationship in this story, in this saga, did you have with your younger brother? Because he seems to admire you. There's a there's a there's a there's an admiration, but also a sort of. <laughs> Especially in the last film, um, not so much in this one. Well, kind of in this one, you pick up on a sort of, they have two kind of different ideologies, um, and there's a, a little bit of a rivalry there. Um, so, like, they, there's a scene where, you know, in this one, where Roy goes into his, uh, Huey's bedroom and he's talking about the... Uh, 
the blogger okay. that he's um, been, you know, following and uh, looking into. And, you know, Roy kind of gives a dismissive um, statement about it because in Roy's point of view, you know, Roy is more about action. Yes. Um, but Huey's more of a... Just think about he, he thinks about role. things and he's more of a uh, sort of passive but also more um, less let's trying to find a way around the problem whereas Roy is like less just go right to it. <laughs> tackle the problem let's and then right move it now. from our remove it from our, our, our line of sight like let's and in the feature film, you see how the two of those connect and how they work together more for the benefit of what Roy is trying to do.